you know, whenever I play any part, it's important to do as much research as possible. So I read the book, The Zookeeper's Wife, and uh, it was very informative, and uh, especially when thinking of what she was going through, because it's in her own words, a lot of the, you know, that's what the book is based on, her journals. And uh, it helped fill out the interior of the character. I love working with animals and children, and uh, when you're an actor, it's a it's a great uh, challenge because they're so in the moment. You never know what they're going to do, and they can always surprise you. And it's wonderful to react to that. Also, I love animals and children. <laughs> I worked very closely with the wrangler, the animal wranglers, and so what I would do is before the takes for that scene with Lily, I would feed her a bunch of apples, and then right before action, or right at action, I would show her an apple, and then I'd walk away and I'd like hide the apple. So she knew that I was the one to go to for the treat. So it's a trick, but that way the, the trunk, um, her playing with me, she's actually looking for food. Antony Zabinska uh, is married to Jan, and He's the zookeeper of the Warsaw Zoo, so the, the two of them run a zoo. And at, you know, at, the, at World War II, when um, her zoo is bombed and they're forcing the Jews into the ghetto, her and her husband, she and her husband decide to risk their lives and the lives of their children to smuggle people out of the ghetto and hide them in the zoo. I started by reading the book, The Zookeeper's Wife, in order to, you know, try to get into character. I went to Auschwitz. Uh, I wanted to, I had never been to um, a concentration camp, and I, I wanted to feel the energy of that place. I, um, and understand the sadness, which I don't think you could ever fully comprehend uh, what happened there and, and what that is, but it was important for me to go. I went to Warsaw and went to the zoo. I met with um, uh, Teresa, the daughter, Antonina's daughter. Um, I saw the house that they lived in and um, looked at pictures and, you know, it was, a, it was definitely an immersion. I love working with Nikki. She is so incredibly intelligent and fierce. Uh, she has a very strong point of view, and that's important for me when finding a director to work with. She was so good at um, kind of wrangling in this huge group of people, uh, animals, and this period drama. Uh, you never felt like the set was ever getting away from her, and I felt like she was a great collaborator. I could come forward and try whatever I wanted and take risks, and she was always there to support me. I've been a fan of Daniel Bruhl. I um, loved him in Rush and all the incredible films that he had done. Uh, one thing that really shocked me about working with him was how funny he was. And he brought this great sense of levity, which I think was really important for the story because we, every scene is so uh, important and rich and, um, heartbreaking and and you feel just really depressed but then on uh, in between takes Daniel's there to, to lighten the mood and I think it was so important for the morale on set but also important for the character he was playing because he's playing a pretty dark uh, person and uh, he's able to give it a sense of humanity that you may not have with someone who just came in uh, with only darkness. I think we do have a stereotype that in order to be brave or strong, it's somehow connected to violence. That you're defending someone or you're fighting to protect your country or, you know, there are many, that's our definition of what a hero is, but there are many other ways that someone can be brave and strong. And um, I think Antonina shows that. I mean, we talked earlier, but she shows that compassion and is, is an incredible form of strength. I think it's important for the people to see this film 
because I feel like it tells the story from another perspective and another point of view. Um, you know, going to school in the United States, I didn't really read that much about women in history. I read a lot of, about men in history, but not so much about the incredible women and the sacrifices they made in history. And I was so moved and inspired by Antonina and the empathy she has for other people. At the end of the day, it's a movie about hope, about family, and about love. And I think what it shows is no matter how dark life can be, how dark it gets, love will always be there and you can find it. And there is something beyond this moment. Hey, Bali here. So did you like that video? Do you think the movie will be a success? Well, if not, maybe it will join the list of biggest box office bombs, which is what I'm here to talk to you about today, with a list of movies from this category. So let's start off with 2009's The Lonely Bones, which bombed at the box office with an estimated $64 million loss. Titan AE from 2000, which had an estimated loss of $137 million. 2015's Tomorrowland, starring George Clooney, recorded an estimated $76 million loss at the box office. The 13th Warrior, starring Antonio Banderas, had a loss of $98 million. Disney's animated Treasure Planet from 2002 lost a whopping $112 million. The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, starring John Neville, lost more than $77 million. The Lone Ranger, starring Johnny Depp, lost $97 million. Guy Ritchie's The Man from Uncle lost $80 million at the box office. The infamous John Carter lost $126 million. And lastly, Hugo by Martin Scorsese lost $60 million. Ooh. So, do you agree with the movies of this list? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe to our channel for all the best trailer releases. See ya!